Hello everybody, it's Andrea and I'm here today with the books I bought in Hay on Y. So this is the first haul of October. There's not going to be many more books this month. I've got about five or six that I've bought because Christmas is coming and starting to buy Christmas presents. So if you've watched the Hay on Y vlog, you'll know I went into various shops and so I'm going to show you the books I bought. So in the Hay Cinema Bookshop, which was the first shop we went into, I picked up two Terry Goodkind books. I bought, I got Naked Empire and Confessor and these are part of the Sword of Truth series so I've got most of the books either in paperback or hardback I'm trying to get them all in these nice big chunky hardbacks um, so I don't have Confessor at all I have Naked Empire in a paperback so I thought I'd pick these up while I was there and they were like this one was like six pounds this one was five pounds or something like that they weren't very expensive and they're in really good condition so I thought I'd add those to my Terry Goodkind collection while I was there honestly this street the next shop I went into I can't remember the name of let me just have a look at my little guide and see if I can find it for you so I think it was number 15 did we number 15 no it might I think it was the hay on white booksellers um, it was one of those. I know I bought something in the Hay on Y book sellers and in the Adam and Annex. So it was one of those two. So I picked up Uncle Jack by Tony Williams with Humphrey Price. The True Identity of Jack the Ripper, Britain's Most Notorious Murderer Revealed at Last. So this one says, the person identified in this book as the killer of five women in London's East End in 1888 has never before been named as a suspect in more than a hundred years of his tense speculation, a very eminent man in his field and naming him will cause huge shockwaves in places where it's still venerated. So this sounds really interesting. I don't know who it is that they're going to say Jack the Ripper is, but I know this book hasn't gone down in Ripperology circles, but I wanted it to add to my very small but rapidly growing Jack the Ripper collection. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. Now, in that same bookshop, I also bought another Jack the Ripper book. I bought uh, The Complete Jack the Ripper by Donald Rumbelow, a new and completely revised edition of a classic case history of murder. Donald Rumbelow was actually a police officer at one point uh, in London, um, and he is basically a complete and utter expert on it. This is supposed to be one of the best books on the Ripper. As you can see, I'm currently reading this. And I wanted this one because um, I wanted it in hardback. There's plenty of paperbacks on eBay, but no hardback. So I grabbed it when I got there. So the complete Jack the Ripper lays out all the known evidence in the most comprehensive summary there's ever been of all the, the facts and theories and nonsense that have been written about the Ripper. Donald Rumbelow, a policeman himself and an authority on crime, has subjected every theory, including those that have emerged since the first edition of this book was published, to the same deep scrutiny. In the process, he has exploded a number of notions that have seemed to be attractive, and in particular, the alleged Masonic conspiracy involving the highest in the land is fully demolished once and for all. In examining the facts, one cannot ignore the mythology, and Mr Rumbelow's book contains fascinating insights into the portrayal of the Ripper on stage and screen and on the printed page. More seriously, he also examines the horrifying parallel crimes of the Dusseldorf Ripper and the Yorkshire Ripper in an attempt to throw further light on the atrocities of Victoria, London. So yeah, as I'm really enjoying this already, I love non-fiction and I'm, I do like my true crime. So yes, can't wait to get on with that one. In the same bookshop, I picked up a couple of books on ancient Egypt. Now, these ones were very cheap. They've got six pounds actually on the, the label. It was Hay on Y booksellers, because it actually says on the sticker, but they were on the shelf where it was half price of the marked price, so they were only three pounds each. And this is The Pharaoh's Master B Builders by Henry Sterling. So obviously it tells us about, for three million millennia, the valley of the Nile from the Delta to Nubia was an immense construction site under the direction of the Pharaoh's Master Builders. The pyramids at Giza, the temples of Luxor, Karnak and Philae, the tombs of the Valley of the Kings, all these colossal edifices are endowed with a mysterious religious quality that has survived through the ages in this intriguing text, illustrated with over magnificent photographs, the extraordinary legacy of the ancient Egyptian kings is chartered. The author draws on historical fact to reveal the spiritual aspects of a unique architecture and building technique. So yeah, I love anything to do with ancient Egypt and because this one was so cheap, had to pick it up as was the next one again on ancient Egypt by the same author Henry Henry Sterling or Henri Sterling and that's the gold of the pharaohs and this is beautifully illustrated 
And um, first we think of ancient Egypt, we think of its monument architecture. The land of the fairies have also bequeathed to us its universal masterpieces and the goldsmith's art. The fa fabulous treasures that were laid out alongside the dead rulers in their tombs quite simply beggared the belief of those in our contemporaries who set eyes on them. Carter for Tutankhamun, Montet for the Necropolis of Tanis. This book presents a unique and stunning overview of the art of the Egyptian goldsmiths. So yeah, I'm going to enjoy that. Um, in the next shop I bought a collection of poetry and it's Dylan Thomas's collected poems from 1934 to 53, uh, edited by Walford Davis and Ralph Maud. The definitive edition of Dylan Thomas's five published volume of poems, 18 poems, 25 poems, The Map of Love, Death and Entrances and In Country Sleep. Dylan Thomas wrote eloquently of his life in all its moods and moments, from the first thrilling mornings of childhood to the acceptance of death at evening. He captures it all in the art and craft of his poetry. So yes, like I said, I'm trying to read more poetry this year. I live in Wales, Dylan Thomas is amazing. I love Under Milk Words, it's one of my favourite plays. Um, so I thought I'd pick up a, a collection of his poetry. Then we went into Richard Booth's. Richard Booth is the best bookshop. Richard Booth, it's a bookmark from Richard Booth. And I picked up two more Jack the Ripper books for my Ripper collection and they are Jack the Jack the Ripper A to Z by Paul Begg, Martin Fido and Keith Skinner, forward by Donald Rumpelo. So again, these three guys that wrote it are very well known in Ripperology. And basically this says, The Jack the Ripper A to Z is simply the most comprehensive book ever written on the enduring mystery of the infamous Jack the Ripper. Compiled by three of the world's leading experts on the subject, the Jack the Ripper A to Z contains in its encyclopedic format a wealth of new information, many previously unpublished photographs and details about the hitherto unidentified police subject, subject, suspect Michael Ostrog. Completely unbiased, the book assesses and throws fresh light on the multifarious theories described the suspects and give details of the policemen, politicians and journalists involved in the case and provides a wealth of topographical details. So, and it is in A to Z format in section so it's nice and easy with some photographs so I'm going to be looking forward to getting stuck into that one shortly as well because I do like my true crime I do like reading about Jack the Ripper it was a horrific time in British history and it's just fascinating because he was never caught and the last Jack the Ripper I bought was Jack the Ripper, Jack the Ripper and the East End introduced by Peter Ackroyd which is this one and it's got a great map of Whitechapel. A lot of them do that now on the inside cover. There's photographs, uh, film stills and everything. Um, so yeah, so it's about Jack the Ripper in the East End which uh, should be fascinating because I think Whitechapel and the East End was a hor horrific place to live back in the day. If you're unlucky enough to be one of those unfortunate people. I mean, it really comes to light in Donald Rumbelow's book when he's describing the conditions, so I imagine this would be even more horrific, but fascinating nonetheless. And the last few books I bought are all paperbacks, and I bought them in Murder and Mayhem. So as you can tell, this is a shop that deals specifically in murders, thrillers, etc. Also does a lot of horror. They had a lot of Stephen King, a lot of Dean Koontz and so on in there. So I picked up the following books, and I picked up a copy of Agatha Christie, The Murder of the, on the Blue Train. Mystery of the Blue Train even, I can't even speak today. This one was £4.95. It's not bad considering the recommended price is £7.99. So this is a Poirot story. I want to change. It is Poirot, isn't it? Yeah, it's classic. To be in the midst of things. Exciting things happen even if I'm the looker on. You know, things don't happen in St Mary Mead. When the luxurious blue train arrives at Nice, a guard attempts to wake Ruth Kettering from her slumbers, but she will never wake again. For a heavy blow has killed her, disfiguring her features almost beyond recognition. What is more, her precious rubies are miss missing. The prime suspect is Ruth estranged husband Derek, yet Poirot is not convinced. So he stages an eerie reenactment of the journey, complete with the murderer on board. I haven't read any Agatha Christie since I was about nine. I used to read this, I used to get them from the mobile library. I'd read all the kids, but by nine I was on to Agatha Christie, so I'm really looking forward to that. Paul bought, and then there were none as well, so I'm, I'm going to read that one after he has. Or before, if I run out of books, not likely. Um, I picked up uh, Peter James Prophecy for 2 95 Now I have read this book. 
I lent it to a friend who took it on holiday and she either got it, dropped it in the pool or spilt something on it, lotion or drinks, I'm not sure. So I thought I'd replace it. I really like this one. A young boy watches his mother die. Drunk students play with a Ouija board in a damp cellar. A sadistic man dies in agony. Can bricks and mortar retain imprints of the emotions experienced with them? Franny is delighted when a chance meeting leads to a romance. The fact that relationship is marred by gruesome tragedies tragedies she dismisses as an unsettling coincidence but eventually she can no longer ignore the fact that she is the only thing linking these horrible events. Is it a murderous practical joke or worse? This is one of Peter James's horror stories, his supernatural stories which I really love. That one is a good one if you can pick it up you should be able to pick it up. I also bought uh, Peter James Faith, this is one I haven't read and this one says to Ross Ransom perfection is more than an ideal it's his living for Ransom is one of the most successful and certainly one of the richest plastic surgeons in the business. Even his wife is perfect. After all, he has spent hours in surgery getting her that way. So when his wife becomes ill and turns her, first, her back first on conventional medicine and then on her marriage as she seeks help from a charismatic alternative therapist, Ransom feels bitter and betrayed. And if he can't have his wife, then why should anybody else? Faith is a terrifying thriller that shows what happens when our belief in people gets out of control. So yes, I am a bit of a Peter James fan, so I'm looking forward to reading that at some point. Ooh. Last two books, and I picked up The Shakespeare Curse by J.L. Carroll. I do, I do like the cover. A sickening modern killer driven by a centuries-old curse. <coughs> Excuse me. A brutally murdered body, body is discovered on a remote Scottish hillside with a mysterious knife beside it. The victim was a beautiful young woman, throat slashed by an unknown assail assailant. The circumstances of the murder suggest ancient pagan sacrifice. Then a trench on that same hill is found to be filled with blood. The shocking discoveries seem to be linked by the ancient curse of Macbeth. From the streets of New York to the twisting corridors of Hampton Court Palace to a remote loch in the Scottish Highlands, the race is on to stop a deadly modern serial killer who will do anything to uncover priceless ancient treasures. So it's one of those books I call archaeological thrillers. I love them. It's Shakespeare as well. Who doesn't love a bit of Shakespeare? So that one sounds fascinating. And the very last one I picked up in Hay on White this time uh, is The Salem Witch Society by K.N. Shields. Salem, New England, many dark nights ago, the most famous witch hunt in history is about to begin. Years later, a young woman is found savage, savagely murdered, her body arranged in the death pose of a witch. Someone or something is reviving the terror of the notorious Salem witch hunts, and only one man, a brilliant, eccentric loner with a dazzling mind and fascination with witchcraft, witchcraft can keep the evils of the past at bay. Rich in history, mystery and witchcraft, the Salem Witch Society is a twisting, terrifying thriller a dark fairy tale for readers who love the discovery witches and the interpretation of murder. I've actually read both of those books, so that's really good. That one's only three ninety five. So that's the thing about Hay on Why that, that you know paperbacks that like three ninety five, you know, not bad. Brand new paperback. So there we go. So those are all the books I bought this time. I went to Hay on Why. Now we usually go back once a year. I save up money all year round, and I go and I buy whatever I want. That's why I can afford to buy 14 books. I think I spent about £70. I also picked up three picture goer magazines for those of you who are interested in, in Hollywood. Um, these all have articles by Diana Dawes in them. Uh, two of them at least have articles on Judy Garland as well. So I've picked those up. These were £2 each as well. So yes, so Hay on Y, if you are in the UK and you can get to Hay on Y, I would really recommend you go because you'll pick up some great books there. For once I didn't actually pick up any Hollywood books. Normally I come back with tons of books on Hollywood and nothing else. But today, no Hollywood, lots of fiction, some Jack the Ripper and some Ancient Egypt. So all sorts of my different types of... <laughs> I got too many interests, it's just not good. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of the books I bought in Hey On Why. If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. Uh, comment if you've read any of these books or if you want to know what I think of these books afterwards and I'll certainly make a video about any of them. Share this video so other people can see if there's anything they fancy and of course if you're not already subscribed please subscribe. I will see you soon. Bye!